Hello and welcome back to some more Bitburners. Last video, we managed to install all my, our augments uh, for the very first time. And then um, I spent a few days trying to grind out uh, my hacking level and money. Uh, and then also trying to install a few more augments. Um, I still in the, I'm still in the process of uh, progressing through the game. Uh, but my goal is to, I guess, level up up to the point where we can actually access all our bit nodes. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on how to use ports uh, within this game because ports is uh, somewhat of an obscure but optional uh, feature within this game, uh, but also very, very powerful. Uh, but before we do that, let's uh, go through some of the comments. Cool. Uh, looks like we have two new comments from Noxford. Uh, so first one is, uh, that's pretty cool, little project script. I dig it, pretty cool to see. Um, yep, thank you. Uh, so this was from Bitburner number 10. So this is from the uh, reading comments uh, YouTube video. Um, so yeah, so that's... It, this game is, um, I'm barely, I feel like I'm barely touching the, the potential of um, what this game can actually do. If you haven't seen the, the posts on the, I guess, Bitburner Reddit page, um, there's a, a lot of a really smart people there that uh, posts um, cool projects. So uh, what I did with the YouTube API, that's barely touching the surface of what this game can really do. Um, basically, if you know how to... Um, uh, create web apps or um, you know create uh, stuff <laughs> stuff using HTTP or, or anything like that um, you can pretty much extend this game and uh, do some pretty cool stuff I was thinking maybe maybe um, someone could try to make a snake game out of this or something <laughs> that would be pretty cool to see but yeah thank you Noxford and then the second one uh, so these, this, he says that these videos are super helpful. Huge props to you. Thank you very much again, Noxford. Uh, and thank you for being a very active part of this channel. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, all right. So um, well, what we're, we're going to be covering is, I guess, the, the concept of ports. Uh, so if you're not familiar with ports, it's essentially a, a feature that allows you to queue up actions uh, within within this game so meaning that um, you know if you want something a, an action to be executed at a certain time or uh, a, a, at a later point uh, then you can actually push that data to a, a port uh, and then you can retrieve that data at a later point and then process that a little bit uh, later and um, the reason why I'm, I'm doing this is because um, these ports I feel could, would play a huge part to improving my current launch fleet script. Um, my goal for the launch fleets is to make it modularized, but also support the market manipulation much more efficiently and uh, in also an understandable mo manner. So as much as possible, I don't want to create some really chunky as code that contains uh, all the functions and everything inside it. Um, this is a launch fleet is already pretty chunky for in my books. So uh, my goal for this investigation is um, trying to find out how I can uh, modularize a little bit and then create some sort of uh, architecture to uh, make the, the coordination a lot faster. And again, this uh, sender and receiver, uh, this th these ports uh, will play uh, a part in that. Um, so I created a few sample scripts here uh, called uh, receiver and then uh, sender uh, just to explain the concept between them. And then uh, another script here called coordinator that essentially just runs both of these just so that I can uh, run them at the same time without having to worry. Uh, so let's run coordinator just, to, just so that we can see the uh, relationship between the sender and receiver. Um, so basically how the sender works is that it's responsible for pushing data to the port uh, and then the receiver is responsible for listening in to that port and then receiving the pop packet and then processing that uh, in its function. And you can really see where this uh, this uh, functionality will be applied, especially when we're coordinating, coordinating the attacks or prioritizing the attacks for our launch fleets. 
Uh, so let's stop this. Um, I actually wish that I created uh, a, uh, a, a kill script as well, but uh, I'm just gonna kill them manually from this side. Alright, so let's go over some of the code. So let's start with the coordinator script because this one is very, uh, very easy to uh, cover. So essentially we define, uh, I guess, the port number and the tick duration. And then uh, some constants here to represent the sender and receiver. And then we just run both scripts with the same parameters. Uh, that's about it. And then we just allocate one thread on each of them. Um, for the sender, this one, again, is responsible for sending data to our ports. Um, and then how this, uh, this script starts is that um, first it, we grab the tick duration and then the port number from, uh, from the list of arguments. Uh, this port number is a number between 1 and 20. So if you're uh, below the minimum port range or uh, above the minimum port range, um, the functions that interact with the port will throw an error. Uh, so I added a guard clause here just to uh, be safe here. Uh, scrolling down to the main logic here, uh, the first thing we do is uh, we grab this uh, port handle. Uh, essentially, if you haven't used ports before, you can think of it as a queue. And if you're not familiar with queue, the queue data structure, it's essentially a thing that allows you to push data and then whatever comes first gets uh, processed first. Uh, first in, first out. That, that's, that's the concept. And then one thing to note about this uh, get port handle is that it's a NetScript 2. Uh, feature it's, it's not available in NetScript 1 so if you're still using um, or defining your scripts using using the dot script uh, convention uh, if you want to use port handle it's time definitely time to switch over to that uh, that version of the the language uh, and then down here we uh, do some checks so I I first check whether the port handle is empty and the reason why I do this is because um, I wanted to test out this uh, at exit uh, function that Netscript provides and uh, according to the documentation it's essentially the thing that allows you to call a callback or a function uh, after the script ends and then I did some exploration here and I discovered that uh, when, whenever you're using at exit uh, you cannot use NetScript functions inside it. And the reason for that is because as soon as the script ends, all the NetScript functions are disabled, meaning that um, if you use NetScript functions in this callback, uh, it wouldn't be able to call that. Therefore, it throws a bunch of errors. So uh, whenever you put stuff in here, just assume that it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to work. And um, I just made a double check here just to make sure that it does uh, and I, I found that it, it definitely just executes them right afterwards so yeah so that's how at exit works and then moving into this main loop essentially what it does is that it just constructs our uh, sample packet uh, which is an object that contains an ID and then uh, I guess the index or the current uh, counter that we have um, and then from this data, we then push that data to uh, the port using the, the port handle. Um, and then if the port handle is full, then we print out max Q size. And I did this for testing purposes just to discover, I guess, uh, how much data can uh, a single port store. And from my discovery, as every single port um, that this game provides uh, can store up to 50 uh, data. So meaning that uh, since we have uh, a maximum of 20 ports per server, every single server can store up to a thousand uh, items with, with inside it. And then we just increment it and then we sleep uh, for one second and then repeat, repeat the process again. Uh, so moving into this push data to port. Uh, so the thing to note about pushing data to a handle is that the the information that it can store is either a number type or a string type, but uh, there's actually a workaround for that. Um, so this JSON stringify uh, function here allows you to convert objects or arrays or anything uh, into uh, a string. Um, and then from that data string, you can then push uh, that data to the handle. And uh, yeah, so meaning that you can do a much more complex stuff with ports if uh, 
if we can do that. All right, so moving into this uh, receiver function here, this one's also very simple. Uh, similar to the sender, we grab the tick duration, the port, and then uh, we check whether this port um, uh, is within the range of the, the port range. Uh, and then moving down to the main function, uh, we grab the port handle, and then uh, we go into an infinite loop, uh, and then check whether there's anything within the, the ports. And if there is, then we read that function, meaning we grab the first function that was put, uh, first message that was pushed in, and then we process that message. And then in our process function here, it's also very simple. Essentially, we just parse that uh, JSON data or whatever it is, and then we print out the information. So I, for, for this uh, scenario, we, I just print out the ID. Uh, and then from that, uh, you now have this uh, send and receive uh, relationship between uh, both scripts, uh, meaning that you can have two scripts that are coordinating with each other. And this opens up a lot of opportunities in the future. Um, so yeah, that, that's about it. That's all I wanted to cover in this video, uh, the usage of um, ports. Um, I'm still trying to grind out um, this uh, <laughs> this uh, my hacking level and money. So uh, again, just expect some delays in in my uploads, mainly because I'm still trying to um, figure out some some components for creating this new launch fleet script. Uh, so again, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.